1659 Fermat informed Hawkins that this Diophantine equation admits only two integer solutions and that a proof by infinite descent had already been sent to Bernard Fernicle de Bézy. As usual, however, Fermat's note fell short of providing a full explanation. Interestingly, although Euler devoted much attention to Fermat's number theoretic claims, he appears not to have addressed this particular problem. More than two centuries later, in 1883, the Italian mathematician Angelo Genocchi published a short proof by infinite descent, ironically relying on Euler's own demonstration of the impossibility of sum or difference of both powers equaling a square. In what follows, Genocchi's argument is presented, with a few explanatory expansions added for clarity. His original paper can be consulted at the link below. Genocchi begins by reformulating Fermat's original presentation of the problem as a system of two equations, from which the Diophantine equation, the square of 2 times x squared minus 1 equals 2 times y squared minus 1, is obtained. Grouping the odd terms and multiplying both sides by 2 gives 4 times y squared equals 2 times the square of 2 times x squared minus 1 plus 1. Given that 2 times the sum of squares p and q equals the square of p plus q plus the square of p minus q, then 4 times y squared equals the square of 2 times x squared plus the square of 2 times x squared minus 2. Since both squares are even, all terms are divisible by 4, thus yielding y squared equals x raised to the 4 plus the square of x squared minus 1 which is no other than a Pythagorean-like relation. As y is always odd, he splits the problem by the parity of x. Case 1. x is odd. Genocchi's smart move is to set the Pythagorean triple as x squared equals u times b and x squared minus 1 equals u squared minus v squared over 2, with u and b both odd. Since they are co-prime, x squared and x squared minus 1 cannot share a factor bigger than 1, then both are squares, u equals m squared and v equals n squared. Hence, x squared minus 1 equals m squared times n squared minus 1, which equals m raised to the fourth minus n raised to the fourth over 2, and therefore 2 times m squared times n squared minus 2 equals m raised to the fourth minus n raised to the fourth. After regrouping and adding m raised to the fourth to both sides, we obtain the square of m squared plus n squared equals 2 times m raised to the fourth plus 1. Since m and n are odd, both sides can be divided by 4, yielding the square of m squared plus n squared over 2 equals m raised to the fourth plus 1 over 2. Thus, 2 times the square of m squared plus n squared over 2 equals m raised to the fourth plus 1. Genocchi remarks that a number twice as square cannot equal a sum of two fourth powers, already proven by Fonicle and Euler. The proofs are not online, but can be easily reconstructed. Squaring both sides gives 4 times m squared plus n squared over 2 all raised to the fourth power equals the square of m raised to the fourth minus 1 plus 4 times m raised to the fourth. After rearranging and dividing all terms by 4, we obtain a difference of fourth powers equal a square, something that Fermat and Euler had shown impossible. The only valid exception is when m equals n, which equals plus minus 1 since the square of 1 squared plus 1 squared equals 2 times the square of 1 raised to the 4th plus 1. Then u equals v, which equals 1 squared, and so x squared equals 1, hence y equals 1, because y squared equals 1 raised to the 4th plus the square of 1 squared minus 1. Therefore, the different equation has the solution x equals 1 and y equals 1. Case 2. X is even. Set the Pythagorean triple as x squared equals 2 times u times v and x squared minus 1 equals u squared minus v squared, with u and v of opposite parity and co-prime. 
without losing generality, set u equals 2 times m squared and v equals n squared, where m may be even or odd, but n is always odd. Hence, x squared minus 1 equals 4 times m squared times n squared minus 1, which equals 4 times m raised to the 4 minus n raised to the 4. Regrouping and adding 4 times m raised to the 4 to both sides yields the square of 2 times m squared plus n squared minus 1 equals 8 times m raised to the 4. Factoring the left-hand side, the difference shows 2 as the greatest common divisor. Since 8 divides the product and n is odd, one factor must be divisible by 2 and the other by 4. Set m equals p times q with p and q co-prime. Subcase 1. m is even. Then the first factor equals 2 times p raised to the 4 and the second factor equals 4 times q raised to the 4. The difference gives 2, which equals 2 times p raised to the 4th minus 4 times q raised to the 4th. Thus, 2 times q raised to the 4th equals p raised to the 4th minus 1, with p necessarily odd. As in case 1, Genocchi points out that Monicle and Euler had already proved that a number twice a fourth power cannot equal a difference of two fourth powers. To reconstruct this step, square both sides and then divide all terms by 4, obtaining a sum of fourth powers equal to a square, which Euler showed impossible. Even when q equals 0 and p equals 1 yields m equals 0, then u equals 0, and so x equals 0, hence the trivial solution. Subcase 2. m is odd. Then the first factor equals 4 times p raised to the 4th and the second factor equals 2 times q raised to the 4th. Working with the difference ends up giving 2 times p raised to the 4th equals q raised to the 4th plus 1, with q necessarily odd. Squaring both sides and dividing all terms by 4 yields that a square equals the difference of 2 fourth powers, a form proven impossible by Fermat and Euler. The valid exception is when p equals q equals 1, then m equals 1. Hence, from the second factor, we obtain n equals 1. This yields u equals 2 and v equals 1. Thus, x squared equals 4, so x equals 2, and y squared equals 25, thus y equals 5. Therefore, the non-trivial solution is x equals 2 and y equals 5. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this content, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment with your thoughts or questions, and share it with anyone who might find it valuable. Your support means a lot.